You are tuned into the Shattered Podcast, Cellbound Edition, with your host, D. Elias. On this episode of Cellbound, I have with me Willie Mack. Thank you very much, Willie, yes, for yes. telling your testimony. Tell me about your childhood. My childhood, it was pretty, it was pretty, it was, I want to say sad and I want to say happy. I mean, I seen. Tell me one of your saddest memories that you remember. Looking at my mother, and she looked like the elephant. Because your dad had beat her up. Yeah. And and your dad was a bad alcoholic. And he was a mean drunk. My dad was. He was. Um, once again, I have to say he he was a womanizer, and he he didn't. He didn't beat on other people. He would just beat my mom. Right. You know, so I could. And your mom just kept enduring that. She. She accepted it, and it was something I. I couldn't and didn't and still don't today accept that. I have a lot going on with that today. Right. It just affected you. So um, it's, it leaves a, an emotional toe on a child to see their mother. I mean, that's the one person that I was raised up in church. I was raised up in Bible, but that's the one person that you that you got. I mean, that's, right. I mean, that's the way she raised me. That's the way I took it until I got older, and the beatings you got worse. And, she didn't want it to stop. Well, she wanted it to stop, but he wouldn't stop. She just didn't want to leave him. She would leave, but we would end up going right back. He would talk her into coming back. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and Willie was not just a real good student. You, you made some mm-hmm. Fs. Yes, I made really all that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you, <laughs> but you didn't want to upset your mother, so you made it a point to change all your F's to B's. Yes, I would. Yeah. But you didn't fool your mother because no. she knew it. Yes, yeah, she she knew it. She knew it. <laughs> but I would change every one of them. You had good intentions. You just didn't. <laughs> like, you didn't like school. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. But I ended up with my GED. You did get a GED? Yes. That's through, very good. Through the system, yes. Right. And I got a GED. At what point did your drug abuse start? Uh, I was doing, from eight from eight years old, I can remember seeing methamphetamines for the first time. At the age of nine, I could hit myself. What, what, did you have older siblings at, at eight years old? What, what, how did you even get introduced to it at eight years old? See, uh, I am um, from this area. I was born and raised in this area. And r- black people were not known for shooting methamphetamines. I mean, it just... I'm 51 now. It just wasn't too many. Too, right. It just wasn't hurt up. And, right. Um, I uh, I was bad. Like I say, my dad she beat my mom, and I started running off out of the house. I I'm mm-hmm. going to run away, and then um, I can't leave my. You mama just couldn't back. bear it, right? I couldn't leave my mom and take them home and I go mm-hmm. back home, but. Sometimes I go out and I go by people's houses and the lights be on and people are out drinking and acting fools. And why, why, I'm, at this age, I'm wondering why are they still up running around like this? Why they got all this energy? Why is everything in all right. the world? But to make a long story short, I'd sneak up to the window and peek, but you know, if you've been on this stuff, you'd know that you hear stuff outside the woods, the bushes and all that there. But I, I was pretty sneaky, and I could move. And I peeked up through the window, and I seen, and 
watch. I went an older dude seen me. I, I just lied to him. I, I didn't grab one of the syringes and poked it. I mean, in my arm, and said that I was using methamphetamine. I call it methamphetamine. He's called man. It's hard. And were you actually using at that time, or you was just I, making anything? I things? just made everything up so I could, and they be a part me, of them. Yeah, I didn't know how to do that, so I lied. I lied. That's where I, I started out being a good liar, and that's where it took off. And you were eight years old. I was eight years old. Did you? Was it just an immediate addiction? No, it caused, I really didn't know what to feel. Right. Only thing I could feel, only thing that I ever remember feeling, and I still feel it today, is the way my mom would look, or the way people would look at me and my mom when we go to the store, or when we go to church, how the preacher would preach so good, but he, my dad played the organ at church. All right, and it would, they would, the preacher and his wife would usher my daddy off this way, and yeah, mama come this way. But. So everybody knew that yeah. your mom, it, it was your dad that was beating up on your mom. Yeah. Everybody knew and accepted. They just accepted it. Yeah, so I made it my business to, after I found out what methamphetamines were, I made it my business to infect their kids. And I did it. A whole bunch of them. Right. You were lashing out and mad at the world because of the way you and your mom had lived. I can tell that that's truly left a very lasting impression on you. Is is your mom alive today? Yes, she's she's alive, happy, got a good husband. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she finally got the strength to leave your dad. Yes, yeah, she finally got the strength to leave dad, but. I just can't, I just don't, I, I can't be around, I, I just can't, I mean, I, I go off and I, like I've done it 10 years, I've been clean 10 years until this relapse, and then it was a good relapse, I relapsed big time. What happened that made you relapse? Everything's going so good, I mean, smooth, I mean, I'm working two jobs, I mean, people in the, I'm helping people in the community. I'm not just with money. I'm out there getting with my hands, and I'm getting in there with them. And I'm helping them do whatever. I mean, on some Saturdays when I didn't work up at the ranch house, I would uh, work Saturdays. But I told them that I needed it off on Saturday mornings so I could help because I'd be off at the plant on Saturday mornings. I would go to the uh, ranch house in the evening and I would, if they were elderly people, Saturday mornings they had me. I, I mean, I can do a lot of work. I Your mean, heart's I, in the right yeah. place. And I, I did, but what got me off, I, it was back to, I don't mean to dwell on almost cause, I mean, I love that woman today, and I, she knows it, but I just choose, I just got to let her go because I, I, I learned a lesson and the way I see it is that's how a woman loves a man, you know. I was, like when I said earlier that I um, got their kids on, on it. Oh, I, I did get quite a few of their kids on it and it, it was meant to be, but I have never try to get at a, a lady or anything like that with that stuff. I don't believe in it. Everybody around knows I don't, I'm a sucker. I mean, he's... You became like. a dealer. Yeah, I was a dealer. But uh, 
A dealer makes money. I never tried to make any money. I would you just, beat the your people heart up was full over, of vengeance. Yeah, I would beat the dealer out of it and take it over here and give it to these people who didn't appreciate it or didn't. When I thought I was doing them a favor. Right. But no, I, I was horrible. And it all comes from everything I look back at is how I watched my mom get beat. And when, like, I left home at nine, but I ran him off before I left because he wasn't going to live in the same house with me no more because I was going to kill him. And he you knew. left home at nine years old? I left home basically at nine. You know, uh, I grew up, I had to come back in, but at nine, at 12, I hadn't been back. It was over, I didn't go back. Right. But nine. Do you kind of feel um, like it, it's your mom's fault that she let you, along with her, stay in that situation? That's a good one. Uh, it it's hard for you to understand why she would live in that environment day right. after day, knowing that it hurts you as well. See, that's where, that's where it was. You said, you, you asked me that, and I, I was saying it, and I, I quit because you're right. I, it was, it was, it's very hard, and I, I understand it now. Right. But I was saying that's how a woman loves a man. My mom loved both of us, but she had made a choice. She wanted to keep both of us in her life if it meant her getting beat or whatever she right. wanted to like that she had. But that's been. a life you couldn't but stand. That, and not that I just couldn't stand, I wouldn't put my worst enemy's kid in Right. Like I mean, instantly, I think anybody who puts their hand on a woman right. is beneath Well, you was carrying the world on your shoulders by just seeing what it was doing to your mom. Yes, yes, yes. But it wasn't just, that's when, and I would pray, man. I would pray so hard. And it just, he just, I couldn't get nothing out of, out of it. I do believe in God. I know there's a God. I know there's a kind and just God, but sometimes I'm just like, where? Where has he been? Is? Right. You wonder where he was at while you was little. I mean, not just for me. I mean, you pray, you do that. Everybody's had some, I hate to say this, but I have stole, okay? I have broke the law. Yeah, I did. And I apologize to those that I did it to. But everybody, I mean, you work hard. I, I didn't learn this to these last 10 years, and oh my God. I feel sorry for the things that I've done. Yeah, you well, mean, we you all work have to, and yeah. you, you buy stuff. Looking back, we would all do something different, yeah. Not that, that, but you like your car, you, you yeah. buy this, you buy that, you put this over there, you leave it alone. That's right. where it should stay. Why? Because yeah. you bought it. You work for right. it. That's where you want it. Yeah. I know now I was. I, I got me a little bit of that. I started putting stuff up, stuff that I worked yeah. for, stuff that I and earned. And you're proud of it. That right? I was proud of, that I wanted to shine up. Okay, I left it mm -hmm. sitting out all night. Why? Because I wanted it to sit there. So yeah. when I pull up in the yard, there's my vehicle. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I mean, I get that now. I mean, age is a lot to do with things, but I'm not just. You failed after 10 years, and it was because of... I failed big time. I laid up 10 years. In, I kind of laid up. I worked really hard while I was incarcerated. I worked hard on me, a plan. Then I went back and had to redo all that because I can't do anything I had to Get, I had to get back in, I had to get in a program. So I started 
I started the program. Just see, 10 years in this. I had been 10 years in this and I was, was only, I hadn't even passed step three after 10 years. And I mean, I was, I was not trying to, you know, we come in this program, we can turn into gurus, so don't be fooled by everybody. I mean, cause that's another problem I have. I mean, people can talk this just like they can the Bible. And it's, it's truly, it's bad. But to answer your question, I, I just, mm, I know, I got the step three in, I know Joe and Hattie. I know them well. Used with them. Mm -hmm. Talk recovery with them. Right. Eight, they helped me. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're proud of me now. They were proud of me then. They were glad to see me alive when I slipped up and went back out there. Yeah. Never downed me. They always, but they told me something that I, I needed, and and it was at the time I needed to hear it. And I just didn't want to man up and do the right thing. Bow down and take my whooping like a man and come on back and get some more. So you were working two jobs yes, and, and you fell down. Did that have something to do with your family? <clears throat> yeah, it was getting around this time of year. My family, they, 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 are, they were really proud of me. I was... Ma'am, you know you bonded me. <laughs> I bonded you many times. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I was pretty I've turtle. known you for many years. Yes, you know, I, I mean, I was something else. And my family, they, they were proud of me. I'm not used to that. I'm, I'm not used to anyone. I, I don't do anything for people to be proud of me. I mean, when you do things, you're supposed to do things not for it, yourself. It's just the thing to do. It's the yeah. right thing. I mean, if you have to think about something, you're wrong right there. Right. You shouldn't do it. So. How long have you been in jail this time? Mm, about 70 some days. And what are you looking at? Uh, I believe about 16, maybe. 16 years? Yeah. What were you arrested for when you came in? Ma'am, I was so zooted. I think I've been up close to 27, 28 days. And you hadn't had any sleep in 28 days? No, I was a lost child. So you probably don't even, the last uh, month not, was a haze. The last yeah. month I... <laughs> you don't even have any recollection probably. I was thinking, I was thinking about that in my bunk the other day. I, I was, I, my birthday's in July and I was working. Um, I think I relapsed in August or something because I relapsed in August and I've been on one since then. So you're looking at 16 years? Yeah, right, 16. And do you don't know when you're leaving to go do your sentence? No, no. Have you been in some of the programs and services that they have here at the jail? I have been attending them. First, I was over in, in the other pod over there. <clears throat> and when I, they moved me over, they, you did good behavior, they right. moved you over. And I went over and uh, I've been attending some and there's this one that they got. It's anger management, but it's, um, I can't think of her name. Man, she's good. She, her and her stone or something like that, her and her husband, they both got some kind of class off in them. I like them too, I mean, they make me, I think, I think, I think, instead of reacting or acting, blurting out, I think, yeah, I, this so you think that anger management class helps you more than all the others? That anger management class made me lay down and and think and think. Right. I, like I've been having problems with with, like I say, I do believe in God. I know there's God. 
I know one day I will be connected with him, but right now I'm just not there. And right, right now I just have to be okay with that and right. just keep reading and stuff. It's like you're trying. I'm going to try to the day I die to get there. But I will not, I will, I know there's a God, but they got this program here and I see you know, I'm here and we look over here, we look over there, we see the good, mm -hmm. and we see the bad, but people like me, we see the bad first. I'm gonna just go back to the program. I, I see the bad first. And I see that the bad outweighs the good. That's not right. So now, just, see I'm not even in the program yet, but they allow us to go. Right. And I, I have you been in the RSET program? No, ma'am. And you're hoping to get it, or, or do yes, you Yes, know? I, 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 at first I didn't, I didn't want it. Now I want it. I want, I want it. I want, I, I want it. I mean, I would really love to take it. I really would. I didn't know how much, Jenna. I really would. If you get the RSET program and you get out and do the after the 90 days and then you get out on the nine month, what kind of a support system family wise do you have? I have, like I said, I got the best family that, I, that you, a man could wish There's for. no alcohol anymore and there's no, no drugs. No, 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 no. But ma'am, I'm 51 and I'm going to tell you about my town. My town's a great town. Be Queen, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you want some help. Right. I mean, I'm 51 years old. I don't have to go to mama's. Now, I'm not doubting anybody who goes to their mama, mm -hmm. but in my hometown, I'm 51 years old. I can get out of jail today. I would have a place to stay somewhere, and I would have a job in the morning. Right. If I so choose, you know, which mm -hmm. I would, to do. I mean, that would be the thing. I want this program because I want to know how to manage right. my life, different situations, the right, correct places. I mean, just because they ain't using or drinking there don't mean that's the right place for me right, right. now. Right. You have to learn um, to let go of the past and build the future and uh, you've been so traumatized by your past that's hard I mean you when you move out at that when you start using drugs at eight and move out of the house at nine years old I mean you're still very much a child and so you kind of missed out on your childhood. And it has affected you long term. If you can get into some programs and services to help you with rehabilitation of what you've been through in your past, you know, there needs to be a healing process at some point to build your future. And Willie can just work and focus on Willie. And I, I wish you all the luck in the world when it comes to that because you are a very good hearted person, very kind. And uh, when you do good, you do really good, you know. And then when you do bad, you change all your F's to B's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 but you've done that with all the right reasons in mind, but still yet. <laughs> so when, when you do the RSAT program or you do your time and you've completed whatever you're looking at, what are, you, what are your plans for your future? Mm, plans for the future. Have you thought that far in advance, or uh, I know it's a day by day right mm -hmm. now, just trying to I figure just out. Want to just a simple 
everything, everyday thing that everybody has. I just want a house, well, a home, a job, and be able to get up and do the same thing over again the next day wow. instead of this same thing. And not rely on drugs or anything to help right, you make it right, through the day. Right. See, up in here, I could I just not pay no attention, not think about it. Well, when I get out there, I'm not thinking about drugs. I'm not thinking about if this don't work out, I'm just going to go get high. I mean, see, the whole time, before I, before I relapsed, I already, red flags was there. I mean. I should have known. Stop. Yeah. How as they always say, I should have known. But I just said, go ahead. And that's when I did it. What is your relationship like with your mom today? Mm, I haven't talked to her. I haven't talked to her. See, once I started using, I used to call her every morning. The four years that I was out, see, I get 10 and I was out four. 10 clean in there and I was working on four out here and I just. And you're talking about the time you're spending in prison? Yeah. Yeah. I mean I actually stopped calling her the day that I started using because I didn't want I didn't want to lead her on and make her think. Right. Or anything. I mean, most people do. They distance themselves from their family when they start using drugs. I mean, I just, I would. She has a sister that's in a wheelchair, and I, I would go over there and take care of her, put a floor in her house, and have to put a roof on there. But they, um, they just. They left it all up to me. It was all up to me, and then that, and it was just so much. I got overwhelmed. I, I stopped, took the focus off me and started doing for them, and then I couldn't do for them what I, I thought would be enough, then meet, meet up to the quota, and it was all on me then. Right, which My added fault. too much stress on too you. Too much stress, and then, like I said, I was working two jobs. This is what really scared me. I was working two jobs. And the government said I made too much money. I, I, I'm a dope head, man. I don't make too much money. What are you talking about? I had a, I mean, but I had made, I was working over at the plant, and then I was working at the ranch house. And I and wasn't paying no attention to what I was doing. I was just not looking off to the side, just getting up every morning routine like I did in the penitentiary every day. Now, just imagine if I could do that. Well, when I do that, I get out. You want the RSAT program. Do you know that you're eligible? I talked to Mr. Walcott, and like I know, he has no authority. Right. He can recommend. It's a, right. It's all up to the judge it's and It's all prosecutor. up to the judge and prosecutor. And I'm not one that's just going to wear them to death because every time they go back there, people flock them in. If you get the RSAT program, how is it going to be different this time than all the times in the past? I will not shut myself off. You're going to focus on Willie this I'm time? Going, I'm going I'm going to do it this time. I want something. I'm going to have something. Right. That I, it ain't no day. I will not deny me this time. Right. I mean, I don't need no dope. I don't need no, I don't need no, I don't need no push. I don't need nobody to right. get in the air and cheer me on. I know what I got to do. Right. I mean, it was like Pastor Snow says it was bred into me what I must do. I'm a man. I must right. take my spot. I must do what I have to do. And just get up every morning and think from this day forward, Willie's going to he's do going what's to do right yes. and what he needs to do, focus on you. Yeah, see, I, he said, man, I'm telling you, those two, they're elderly people, but man, they got some good sense. I mean, they are, he says, I can't start over. Right, none of us can. And, I'll, you know, I've always kind of heard these things. 
starting a new stuff. I can't start over. Because if I had done something to you and you see me, first thing you're going to think about is what I did. I mean, no, I'm sorry for what I've been well, doing. Everybody deserves a second chance, it though, Willie. Yes, but. And this is your time. Okay, but I've done it once. Who said I'm going to do it again? Well, that's up to Willie. That is correct, and Willie ain't going. That's up to Willie. <laughs> the only thing that part that you can do is take me for my word. That's right. And I apologize for putting you in that position. <laughs> Have faith in yourself, though, and work on your inner peace. Yeah. If you can find that inner peace, you can move forward. Mm -hmm. I think you're you're still kicking your own butt, you know. I was, you know, I just your own didn't worst know. enemy. I just didn't know no better. You know, like they say, but you anger. do now. Yeah, I do. I say do. anger. <laughs> so this, this, this moment forward, you can work on uh, making Willie the best person he can be. I hope you get into the RSAT program and utilize all of the programs and services. Do you try to utilize all of them here now? I, I don't miss nothing they have. Good. I don't miss nothing they have. Good. Because Hattie and Joe, you know, you know they've walked that mile, mm -hmm. and they can help you out a lot too. Yeah. I wish you all the best in the world, Willie. I've known you for a very <laughs> long time. I've bonded you many times out of jail. Yes, and uh, you, you deserve to have a good life, so. You focus on you. Just work at it every day and not put other people's worries and stress on you. You know, Willie needs to just take care of Willie. Yeah. If there was something that you could tell your mom or your family today, what would it be? Good. I apologize. All the waste of time. For real. Okay. Thank you very much, Willie, mm -hmm. for giving your testimony today. Thank you. Thank you. Please support our sponsor, RenovationTea.com. You'll find a large variety from daily to specific herbal remedy teas, all certified organic and fair trade. Use code SHATTERED and you'll get a 10% discount. You can see the link below. Hi, I'm Dee. I'm the host of The Shattered Podcast. Please like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell on the notifications so you won't miss an episode. I'm very passionate about helping families. If you are an expert that would like to help or would like to share your testimony, please contact me. Thank you.